anything and get eaten by the shark first. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And then, uh, of course, you know, when you're filling out the form, please, you're going to ask the question and, and submit it. Please make sure that you have concise, accurate, and complete information when you submit your question to Ask Oscar. Otherwise, uh, it's going to go either on the bottom of the pile or not in the pile at all. So, but uh, uh, Pete, thanks again uh, for another sure. uh, excellent session of Ask Oscar. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Yeah, thank you for to uh, Bernard Smith and to me, B, for putting those questions out there. And uh, you know, keep at it. Don't give up. You'll do fine. Just Absolutely. take practice, man. You bet. All right. Thank you, guys. And more to come on Got Mead Live, so don't get up. Stay right there in that seat. We'll be back. Besides being the county seat of Cass County, it's also the home of Prairie Rose Meadery, the only meadery in North Dakota. Owned and operated by Susan and Bob Rude, they produce five amazing meads with a sixth on the way, all available in their tasting room. From bees to bottles, the Prairie Rose Tasting Room is located at 3101 39th Street South, Suite E in Fargo, North Dakota, and features their award-winning traditional and blackberry meads. Other amazing flavors available include ginger, mint, cherry, and an upcoming star anise mead. Tasting room hours are Thursday through Friday, 5 to 10 p.m., Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday from noon to 6 p.m. Make Prairie Rose Meadery a must-do when you're in Fargo, North Dakota. Visit them online at prairierosemeadery.com or stop by at 3101 39th Street South, Suite E in Fargo, North Dakota. Prairie Rose Meadery, a delightful mead experience. It's not the name of the meads that causes Moonlight Meadery to consistently win more and more medals at the Major Cup International every year. It's the world-class meads that have depth, balance, and taste incredible. Meads with passion. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Moonlight Meadery makes meads with passion, love, and care. Enjoy a Moonlight Meadery mead today. Go shop for some right now. homebrewtalk.com your absolute everything resource for brewing beer at home their forum covers recipes brewing equipment and help from member brewers if you picked up your equipment today you can start brewing tonight with everything you need to know at homebrewtalk.com sign up today for as little as four dollars a month and become a supporting member Wow, and we are back live here tonight on Got Mead Live. Uh, thanks for tuning in and sticking with us. Uh, Vicki, another Ask Oscar, uh, and I'll tell you, you know, having the opportunity to sit with him in the studio and go over some of these uh, topics, you know, he, he's talking about tonight about uh, wine and uh, honey aroma wheels and learning to smell and putting those aromas together with, uh, you know, whatever you're going to add to your honey. I mean, it's just a, a whole thing about just the smell of the honey that you're using and how important is that, you know? Yeah. And it really, I mean, it really is. It's, you've got to pay attention. The quality of your ingredients are going to have all the bearing on the quality of your meat. And with honey, the smell is almost as important as the taste. Yeah, totally. Well, I, you know, I've found uh, AJ, uh, and maybe you can expound on this a little bit. But uh, you know, I have learned to taste with my nose mm-hmm. because uh, you know, you I smell it, and then I put it in my mouth, and it just it's like, oh, this is quite a bit different, you know. Because before mm-hmm. you just you pop it in your mouth. And you taste what you taste, but it's different now that, you know, you take some time to smell it, right? Yeah, well, you, it, I, was, I think, was it Peter Ken talking about how you sort of had to separate it from the sweetness, which you can't really do if you're tasting it? True, true. But uh, excellent Ask Oscar uh, segment tonight. And uh, thanks to... Uh, Bernard Smith and Meadby for uh, submitting uh, to the Ask Oscar. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and again, I know you know we're t- you know beginning to sound like broken records. Please, when you're going to submit your questions about your mead, uh, you know if if Vicky and Oscar don't have the complete information about your recipe, and that includes the processes uh, that you went through, 
uh, you know, to put it together. And it's very, very difficult for them to offer up any kind of advice or, or to answer your question if you, don't, uh, if you don't do that. So please, when you're submitting, read all of the pertinent information on the submittal form there. Make sure that you can answer each and every one of those questions. Be as concise as you can, uh, because that will help uh, Pete and Vicki uh, more in the future, uh, you know, when it comes down to that. And also, if there's something you can't answer, mention that you can't answer it. Yeah, yeah say that, then we won't, then we'll realize. I didn't check the temperature. I don't have a pH meter, you know, exactly. that type of thing. And yeah. that's cool. I mean, everybody learns you know, as they go. But yeah, don't just leave it blank and then expect us to read your mind about whether you had that or didn't have that or whatever. You know, details are important. Yeah. And uh, a lot of fun having Susan Root on tonight uh, from Fargo, North Dakota, Prairie Rose Meadery. And uh, I tell you, if you're ever up in that neighborhood, Stop on by and visit with them, 3101 39th Street South, Suite E in Fargo, North Dakota. That's Prairie Rose uh, Meadery. Uh, they've got a nice little tasting room there, and uh, they even offer uh, a light meal, crackers, cheese, fruits uh, there. So uh, it sounds like a pretty nice place. It is. I've seen their pictures, and she, they've got it set up really nice. They did a great job. Yeah. And uh, the wrap-up tonight, uh, we always like to mention uh, at least somebody. Uh, you know, I go through the forums and pick out something uh, and, uh, you know, throw a shout-out uh, out there to, to somebody. Tonight, I, I came across this post. This is in the Hive section in the uh, Got Meat forum, and uh, this is the one that's open to the public. It's not in the patron section. So anybody can go there and check this out. You have got to see these stunning photographs of bees uh, taken by, I don't know what the person's name is, but uh, the post is from EJM3. Uh, his partner, uh, Dallantech, uh, I, I don't know who it is. Uh, I just don't have a name. But The, uh, the photographer, I think, is John Kimbler. John Kimbler? John, John Kimbler. Okay, John Kimbler. Uh, the link is in the hive, and you really got to check this out. I mean, these photographs are just absolutely the most stunning things you ever want to see. And uh, AJ, when I first saw them, I know you've seen them already. Uh, they they almost look like paintings, like like artistry. Yeah, yeah. Some of it's surreal looking. Oh, and I've always envied people who have the talent to make because I love playing with cameras and my stuff never looks that good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, thanks, uh, EJM3, uh, for putting that up there in the forums, uh, in the hive section there. Uh, just stunning photographs. I just cannot say enough. I, I mean, you know, I take my camera out to the lake and I take pictures of birds and whatnot. And, you know, I think I'm pretty good right up until the point I saw these pictures. And it's like, dude, I am the most amateur photographer out there. <laughs> I just can't get over to the uh, the quality of these pictures. I mean, you're, you're talking something that is almost, I don't know, what a, you know museum uh, quality. But, uh, hey, heck of a show here tonight, guys. Uh, a lot of fun. We're going to get on out of here. You want to tune in next week. Uh, we're going to have some more fun. Uh, Tyson and Alan from the Meat Makers uh, are going to be here with us, and it's just going to be a group chat. You heard them on uh, on the show tonight, Tyson and Alan. If you're still listening, uh, can't wait, guys. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks to Derek from Georgia for uh, calling in here tonight. And, of course, always nice to hear from Chris down in Mississippi and Doug Fensky, uh, uh, Doug Fensky over in the Netherlands getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, Vicky. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> Just dedicated. Saying, dog, the word is dedicated. Dog, dog I love you. You're nuts. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and and getting ambushed by the boys. That was great. <laughs> Tyson and Alan. It's like, oh, we're gonna have way too much fun next week. <laughs> getting ambushed by the boys. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, it has been a fun night here on a Tuesday night. So you want to tune in next Tuesday night, nine o'clock, right here on Got Mead Live. You know where to go. If you don't, uh, just uh, go to TuneIn Radio, type in Got Meat Live. It'll pop right on up. Catch the replays on SoundCloud. 
and uh, on the uh, Gottmead website, uh, and we'll get you all. Well, actually, all that information is it's already out there. If you're a member of the forums, pay that twenty five bucks. Become a patron member. We'll see everybody next week. See you later, y'all. Take care, everyone.